what I want to say is that I heard a lot about the need to foster innovation. I think everybody agrees on that. I heard a lot on the need to have transatlantic cooperation on this. I think everybody agrees on that. I think I heard also a lot on the need to pursue the dialogue. Let's see this as part of a beginning rather than the end of a process. A dialogue to explore how different pathways that seem at the beginning can converge, can enrich mutually. And I even heard that there is a, an agreement that we should move to produce less, to produce more with less. And I'm absolutely delighted with that. If, if we have that, uh, if we had this uh, uh, session today and we reached this conclusion, I think we did our job. And this discussion we'll pursue, I'll do now a bit of publicity. Farm Europe is going to have its global food forum in the next 15th and 16th of November, close to Brussels, and this will be the core theme of our debate there. So, if you are interested, I encourage you to register. Thank you. Thank you very much, Hal. Well, we are coming towards the end of um, this morning's proceedings, but uh, before we do so, uh, I'm going to give the floor um, to Thierry de la Sky, uh, a great friend and colleague and co-founder of the Forum for the Future of Agriculture, for the closing address. Dear Commissioner, dear Secretary, we are really welcoming warmly your initiative. And uh, working together for sustainable agriculture production, for protecting our environment and confront climate change is what we were expecting. This is very much in line with the mission of our forum to contribute to an agricultural and food system in Europe and globally which is more resilient and more sustainable. We have also long championed the role that the European Union and United States can play by working together in this area and this is why we are so honored to have been able to host today's event alongside our colleagues of Farm Europe. Thank you, Joao. Together, the two of you have an extraordinary opportunity to provide truly global leadership in an area of supreme importance. And you have the courage to start out in this journey and it is very impressive. Thank you for this. Of course, the proof will be in the pudding. Mm -hmm. And whilst we stand ready to help support this initiative wherever we can, we believe that it will be interesting to see the progress made in a number of key areas. And those key areas are, first, ensuring that the profitability of land managers and farmers whatever is the site, small, medium, or large, is recognized as being key to unlocking the challenge to more sustainable food production whilst protecting the environment, enhancing biodiversity, and confronting climate change. This is of utmost importance. Land managers and growers are the only custodians of the land we have, and unless they can sustain themselves in business, then the holistic benefit we all seek will be impossible to deliver. Then the point made by Paolo, unlocking the combined potential and capability for R&D and innovation, which is ours in our grid companies from both sides um, of the Atlantic and our grid universities will be key to developing both farm practices and technological innovation, environmental protection, biodiversity enhancement, and confronting climate change. But this has to be done with our farmers, 
we have to take our farmers with us and they have to feel, they need to have the feeling they are not excluded in this journey. And you could feel that from some question from my French colleague, that they, I'm not sure they are at home with the uh, initiative. This means also that both the European Union and the United States must work together to put in place mechanisms that foster greater public-private partnership in the area of R&D and innovation. And you made very clearly this point, Paolo, thank you. On trade, we need to ensure that we build sustainability into the ongoing discussions and recognize and account for the new green opportunities being created as well as seeking to overcome existing or future trade barriers. There will be probably also a need to recognize and respect the fact that EU and US might have two different routes to come to the same point. Also, we have to invest collectively in a common understanding and accounting for the externalities in agriculture production system and finding ways to ensure those are rewarded. If they are not paid for, why should the farmers move? So we really need, and Commissioner, you, you raise and you give an example with carbon farming about that. Well, but we need to pay for, be paid for, but we also need to deliver certified, verifiable carbon credits. It's crucial. And finally, link to this, ensure that we do set common and ambitious goals for environmental protection, biodiversity enhancement, and enabling agriculture to play its role, to be part of the solution in mitigating uh, the climate change. This will require a constant exchange of knowledge and information. This will require an agreement on common standards. It has been said many times uh, this morning. And also, this required, we are thinking on ways of rewarding land managers and farmers who need to deliver. Take the farmers with you, please. These are, however, just a few folks, which I hope are helpful in uh, helping you to think how to develop it and to energize your debate. Agriculture has not always been the easiest area of collaboration between the United States and the European Union, but by setting out the common objectives and intent, as has been done today by you, Commissioner Wojciechowski, and by you, Secretary Vilsack, we are perhaps taking the most important step, and I really welcome this, and I wish you all the best. Thierry, uh, thank you very much indeed for the closing address and also how for your um, reflections as well. Um, I know, uh, Commissioner, Mr. Secretary, uh, Paolo, you need to get on to your next um, engagement. So um, in the interest of time, uh, before I wrap up here with the rest of the audience, I want to thank all three of you for participating in the panel session this morning, for joining us with Farm Europe and the Forum and explaining this new chapter that is indeed exciting. We wish you all the best and thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, while our distinguished guests um, leave the stage, uh, that leaves me just uh, the opportunity to uh, express a few words of thanks. Um, events like these don't just happen overnight, and I'm very grateful to the teams at DG Agriculture and also to USDA for helping to put together um, today's event. Also to the support teams from Farm Europe and the Forum um, in administering and organizing everything that we've, um, that we've had today. To, to you, Hao, and again, Thierry, thank you for your opening and closing remarks, much appreciated. Um, we hope that you have been uh, stimulated, perhaps even inspired by what you've heard here um, this morning. If you'd like to share some of those reflections with us, do join us for tea and coffee and other refreshments afterwards. If you need to get on with your uh, day, then we wish you every success with that. 
Thank you to all of you for joining us and participating. Um, Farm Europe, uh, you've done your publicity there for your um, event uh, starting shortly in the middle of November. The forum will be back in Paris, uh, linked to the French presidency in early December, and we very much hope we'll be back with our annual conference here in March uh, next year, 2022. That's all, folks. Thank you very much indeed.